Next up, we have Richard Piacentini, the president and CEO here at Phipps Conservatory. So I'm going to switch hats. I want to talk to you as a board member of the International Living Future Institute. And I want to talk to you about a new program that we have that's coming out called the Living Food Challenge. And it's coming out as a pilot program right now. And by pilot program, that means we want to test it with a number of organizations and individuals. And then we want to get your feedback so that we can modify it before we actually put it out there. But before I get into that, I want to talk to you about some work from Carol Sanford, and she talks about four different paradigms of how we interact with the world. And the first model is called the extractive model. And in the extractive model, a person who works in this kind of model, it's all about them, so, or all about me. They see the, see the world as fragments, and fragments that are there for the taking, which means they're going to take what they want. They don't care who they hurt or what they hurt in the process. As long as they get theirs, that's all they care about. Sound familiar to some people? Never mind. <clears throat> the next model is called the uh, less bad model. And this, in this model, a person is starting to see that it's not just about them, it's about us. They're starting to see some interconnectedness. And they see the world as fragments, but now they're trying to stabilize them. And you can think of the beginnings of the environmental movement at, with this model and this whole idea of reduce, reuse, recycle, trying to be less bad. The third model is called the do good model. And in this model, again, it's about us. Now we're starting to see reciprocity. We still, still see the world as fragments, but now we're trying to, to improve them. And uh, this is where a lot of the green building movements have gotten to, where they're trying to actually do more and do better than just being less bad. The last model is called a regenerative model. And a regenerative model, it's about us. And we see the world as a system, but not only as a system, as an interconnected system. And there are no fragments. We see the world as a whole, and we're just nested systems within other nested systems. This is the model that we feel that we need to move forward with, uh, this regenerative thinking, uh, to really, um, f this is where society needs to go. And that regenerative thinking uh, model is the model with which the Living Building Challenge is uh, based on. The Living Building Challenge came out as a green building uh, standard. It's the most rigorous green building standard in the world, and it looks at everything comprehensively and holistically. It looks at place, it looks at water, it looks at energy, health and happiness, materials, equity, and beauty. And one that we heard earlier about the uh, Center for Sustainable Landscapes behind me as being the first well-building certified building in the world. It's also a living building challenge building in the world. Uh, which is the most rigorous green building standard in the world. It's also LEED Platinum and the first Sustainable Sites Platinum building project in the world as well. Uh, and it's the only building that's ever met all of those in one, in, one, uh, in one building. And this building really represents this idea of holistic thinking and regenerative thinking and really looking at everything from both our human health, environmental health, as being totally interconnected. So now the question is, can we adapt this idea of holistic thinking in the way we build buildings to our food systems. And we think there is, and it's called the Living Food Challenge. And the Living Food Challenge is trying to address many of the things that, that we've heard about today, and, and actually yesterday as well. We talk about food waste. We talk about loss of topsoil. We talk about hunger and malnutrition. We talk about processed foods. We talk about food miles and all the transportation and, and energy that's used to transport food all around the world. We talk about the overconsumption of meat. And we talk about things like advertising to children, particularly highly processed, unhealthy foods. We talk about GMOs and we talk about monoculture and all the, and the problems with monoculture and loss of biodiversity. It also tries to address things like the displacement of farmers and farm workers' rights and food worker safety and sustainable and subsidizing harmful farming. You can see it's a very comprehensive program. And I'm going through it rather quickly. Uh, but I do want to say that this, this whole uh, pilot program is on the website if you're interested in learning more about it. Uh, I'm trying to condense an hour long presentation into 15 minutes. And I have a, a, very, a timekeeper here that I got to make sure I, I, I stay on track. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> but it also tries to address things like factory farming, declining fisheries, and then the, the evolving standards that we have where we're trying to find out what's a better way to do things and things not only with organic standards but also now looking a new thing that's coming out now which is called regenerative organic, uh, regenerative organic th uh, standard. 
So the new Living Food Challenge then tries to address all of these food cradle to plate impacts. And it tries to address them at multiple different levels. It looks to primary producers, whether it be the farmers, the people doing fishing, livestock production. It looks at secondary producers, uh, you know, how this food is processed before it gets to, uh, to us. It also looks at the distributors, whether it be the supermarket or the restaurant or the baker. How can we actually create a system that encourages the best way to, to grow, manage, produce uh, uh, our food? So again, just like the Living Building Challenge, it's broken up into a number of uh, areas related to things like place. And it looks at uh, trying to look, take a regional approach to food. In other words, let's look at the kind of foods that are native and natural to a particular area. Let's emphasize those foods. It takes a very comprehensive uh, view of looking at soil health. What are the best practices for maintaining soil health and the way we produce our food? It looks at net positive water. Again, just like the Living Building Challenge, how can we manage our stormwater on site? How can we uh, work, develop systems that are based on the natural water systems that are native to that particular part of the, the country or world? It looks at net positive energy. And again, we should, the way we use energy, we need to be looking at current solar income and wind as opposed to fossil fuels in the way we produce our food. It also has a nutrition red list. These are products or chemicals that we want to keep out of our food. We heard earlier from Leo, there's a lot of things that get into the food chain uh, that, that really, we really shouldn't be eating. Uh, these, we're trying to develop a red list of, of uh, actual chemicals that we want to keep out of our food. It talks about transparent health uh, ingredient list, that we need to know everything that goes in our food, even those undisclosed chemicals that get it into the food that we heard about earlier as well. It talks about safe handling and public health. And what are some of the things that we need to do to ensure the safety of our food? And things like, again, the red list. This is the same red list that we find in the Living Building Challenge for Buildings. We need to keep toxic chemicals away from people. And let's, and let's make sure that that happens in the way we produce our food as well. It looks at a living economy. Uh, sourcing. It looks at food miles. How can we minimize the amount of food miles? Let's focus on local foods in the way we produce and, and eat food. It looks at responsible in industry. Things like using FSC certified packaging or organic certified organic standards. What are some of the best practices we can do for the way we produce our food? It looks at net zero waste and methane management. Again, these are critical issues that we need to address, not only for climate change, but also for the way we produce all the waste that we're producing in the whole system. And it looks at equitable access to healthy food. Everybody should have a right to have healthy food, uh, no matter where you live or whatever economic uh, income that you have. And also looks at workers' rights that follows the JUST program in making sure that people are treated fairly, and the, the people that produce our food are treated fairly. And sacred life treatments. Um, let's, let's respect people's various um, desires for the way they want to eat food, whether it be vegan, uh, vegetarian, or if, whether they want to uh, use an animal products or gen genetically modified organisms. And again, just like the Living Building Challenge, it really focuses on, on this idea of beauty and spirit because we want to make sure that you know beauty is what inspires us. We need to create, show people that the, the direction or the place that we want to lead them to, that we want them to go to, we have to show them it's better than what they've left behind. We can create systems that are better than what we have now, but if we want people to go there, we have to show them it's better and that, so actually that they actually desire and want to go to those places. And inspiration and education. Again, it's very important as we develop these systems that we share the knowledge that we've, we've learned uh, with everyone so that, again, people understand what it is they want to do and, how, and where, where we want them to go. And then it comes up with this idea of a label, uh, of really showing that these are all, the, so when you purchase something, you should be able to know everything about that food, how it was produced, where it was produced, all the different things associated with that food. Uh, that is the whole idea behind the Living Food Challenge. Again, like I said, it is, a, it is in a pilot phase right now. Uh, we're very interested in finding people, organizations, whether it be farms, restaurants, um, any kind of producer of food. 
uh, that we would like to find people who would like to help test this model so we can get feedback so that this can be launched. And again, it's based on the whole idea of the Living Building Challenge. Let's create a holistic food system that addresses many of the issues that we've been talking about uh, over this today and yesterday. And I'm actually way ahead of schedule, aren't I? Okay, I think I'm the first speaker to <laughs> beat the clock. So thank you.